Hey everyone, the long awaited video is finally here. I know that you all have been asking for probably the last year to see a tour of my food storage area, my cellar, my basement, depending on where you're from, you may have different names for it but basically the foundation under our home that holds our food. And our basement does stay at a pretty cool temperature, specifically this time of year. And so it keeps everything really, really nice. Actually this week I was able to can up my last pumpkin that I had wintered over in the basement and it is almost March. So I think that's really exciting that I was able to keep a pumpkin down there and that just tells me that my temperatures are at a great spot and everything is really doing well. So you guys will be seeing me can that pumpkin probably in the next video that you see posted. So let's go ahead and head downstairs. It is dark down there. Um, we have the windows covered with some things and there's not a lot of lights down there. So I'm gonna do my best to show you all with some poor lighting, but that's just the way it goes whenever you are storing food you don't want a lot of light going on. So I decided to go ahead and give you guys an overview of everything before I dig into what is on my shelves. So as you come around the corner here at the bottom of the steps, you have this whole area. Our basement is kind of interestingly shaped because our house is interestingly shaped and I really hope <laughs> that the furnace kicking on isn't going to interrupt my talking here, but we will work with it. So over here is a workbench. Um, we have a little shelf here. This is the bulk of the canning stuff. Then over here is some dry storage we have. Got little people playing hockey down here. And then another shelf here. This is another freezer. And then when I come around this way, I have a little area that I can use down here with a stove. And then here on this shelf, we have a lot of dry goods as well. So I'm gonna turn the camera around and we will dig into this. All right, I thought I would take it section by section. And I really have a very long-term mentality when it comes to canning. That's why I do things in such massive quantities. Um, for a little background on me, my parents were both Mennonite background and Corey's parents are Mennonite and Amish background um, through his family. So everybody in our families cans. Everybody has done it for generations. So I have a plethora of knowledge. I call his grandmother at times about things. I'll share a little trick here in a minute that she shared with me about something. But along with all of that knowledge is also the knowledge of how long things last. So a lot of times I ask my mom, or my mother-in-law, like how many years is applesauce good on this shelf? Like how old do you let things get? That kind of thing. So a lot of things I know are gonna be just fine for two to three years. So if I'm going to make applesauce, why wouldn't I make two years worth of applesauce? That way next year I don't have to do that and I don't have to make the mess again <laughs> and I can focus on something else. So a lot of my canning I really think of as almost like an every other year thing where I have certain things that I'm really gonna focus on this summer and things I focused on last summer and I'll get to more of that. So one of the things I really focused on this past summer was fruit. Um, we will have some fruit to do this coming year and you guys will get to see that through my videos. However, I did a lot of fruit and that's the first section that we're gonna kind of tap into here. I'm going to just kind of go from top to bottom and work my way through. So the top shelf up here, and we have a little step ladder back here, is all of my jams and jellies. And the reason I put them on the top is because a lot of times my daughters come down and get things for us for the dinner table. And if they are reaching for something really, really heavy, like a whole jar of pears, um, it could easily fall down. So grabbing a little jar of jelly is relatively simple next to something really heavy. Before I get started, I know these are jams. I'm probably gonna end up calling them jellies because that's what we called it growing up but it is, these are jams. I know they're not jellies, except for my grape. I think that would be considered a jelly, but anyway, so jam. So this is a sugar-free strawberry jam that I kind of played around with this past year. I do use sugar in most of my stuff, but I wanted 
something that I could just try out that wouldn't have so much sugar for myself because I don't eat a lot of sugar. So the next thing on the row here is a peach um, syrup that I experimented with. I kind of came up with the recipe on my own this past year. I had a bunch of extra peaches and so I wanted to make something that we could pour over pancakes and waffles and that kind of thing. Um, this is my grape jelly and I actually have some grapes in the freezer so I need to make up the rest of my grape jelly. This isn't even all of it. Um, so that's going to be coming in a video soon. I'm going to show you all how to easily make grape jelly. Blueberry jam has been probably our favorite between that and apple butter. That We've been going through that a lot. So that might be one thing I have to do this coming year. I'm not entirely sure. And then there's strawberry jam. We don't need to do that for sure this next year. We have plenty up here. And then here is apple butter. And because of the rate that we go through apple butter, there is a chance by fall I'm probably gonna need to do some more. And what I often do is I will take my applesauce from the last year and make it into my apple butter. And we've just been blowing through it. I found a really great recipe that you actually put some apple cider into it as well. So I will have to show that to you all this fall um, when I'm ready to make apple butter. Moving down to the next shelf, um, here I have my canned berries and I know that that's a very unusual thing. People, whenever I say that I can blueberries and strawberries, they kind of look at me like, why would you do that? So one reason is that for myself, whenever I freeze blueberries and strawberries, now we do have um, some frozen blueberries and strawberries, but for the most part, I can taste the freezer taste. And I know that might sound odd, you maybe really never thought about it, but I can taste that they've been frozen. And you have to thaw them out. The texture of canned blueberries and canned strawberries is exactly like thawed out frozen berries. So if you were gonna make a blueberry pie, if you were going to make a strawberry pie or use these in lots and lots of ways, which I do, which you all have seen me use them in some things here on my channel and I can continue to show you how we use them, um, but they pretty much act exactly like a thawed out berry. So the, I do add a little bit of sugar to these. The girls honestly will beg to just eat them like in place of candy, <laughs> plain. But we usually use them in oatmeal. We use them to make anything like you can make blueberry bread. You can use them to flavor your yogurts. And lately we've been using them in kefir because I've been making a lot of milk kefir. And so we just put a little bit in the bottom of the glass, whether it's blueberries, strawberries, any of the fruits and then we pour our milk kefir on top of it and eat it. I think it's just extremely convenient and I have found stuff at really good deals. If you looked at the dates on a lot of my things, things are all over the place. They're not necessarily when things are grown because for example, I have a ton of canned strawberries and I canned them last March because I found them at a local market for a dollar a container and it was just a crazy good deal. I couldn't pass it up. And so now we have a bunch of these. And the, our favorite thing to use these for is actually to use the strawberries in something else, whether a smoothie or strawberry milk or whatever, and then take this juice that's left over and make strawberry lemonade. It is the best strawberry lemonade you've ever had in your life. And just a disclaimer, I did not add color to this. This is what the color is of strawberries whenever you can them, they're beautiful. And I love my blueberries as well. We use them a lot. We are a blueberry loving family, so we tend to use them. And you all have seen me can these. What I'm going to do is put on the screen whenever I have a video linked below for something that might be here. Not everything on these shelves has a video, but some of it does. So I definitely showed you all how to can mandarin oranges. This is something great. I like to have some citrus on the shelf. And then I had a bunch of apples left over last year that I just wanted to, I was so tired of doing applesauce. So <laughs> I just decided to go ahead and make a bunch of apple pie filling. This is amazing. It's very delicious. It's very, very simple to make. Um, and we can use it to make apple crisp. We can use it in our um, oatmeal, we can use it to make apple pie. You can warm it up and put it over top of ice cream, homemade ice cream. It is delicious. 
And then back over here, you're not gonna be able to see it because I have it kind of hidden behind a post. I have a row of these cherries. I am hoping to can my own cherries this next summer, but Aldi gets these cherries in once in a while and when they do, I like to grab a case of them. I don't know, I probably have 12 jars, some 10 or 12 jars of these and all they are is cherries and a little bit of sugar and my girls, this is also like candy. It's so delicious and you can make cherry pie with this. It has no dyes in it. A lot of cherry pie filling you buy in the store has red dye in it. So this is just a great way to get a more natural canned good on your shelf without you doing the canning. But I'm hoping this, this summer to do canned cherries. So I guess that's a fruit that I need to do myself and just haven't yet. All right, so we're going down one more shelf here. <laughs> and um, so here on the end, I've got a lot of applesauce. I don't know if you guys can see it. And something I wanted to show you all because I get so many questions of all kinds of things is applesauce does separate sometimes. There's nothing wrong with it. All you do is open it up, stir it up a little bit, but sometimes you do end up with a little bit of the juices on the bottom and that's perfectly normal. So next to the applesauce, we've got berry sauce, and this was kind of a concoction that I came up with out of the fact that I had a ton of frozen berries this past fall that really needed to be used up, something done with them. So I went ahead and I made applesauce, but I put berries in it, and it's basically like a flavored applesauce. The girls love this. This is one of their favorite kind of treat items, and they ask for this. I'm sure we will be through it until next fall, and I may have to turn around and do some more applesauce. I won't need more regular applesauce, I don't think, but I may need to make berry sauce because now it's a thing and it's something that they like. And next to that, I actually have a bunch of Costco peaches because this past year before I canned all of my own peaches, I didn't have any canned peaches and the Costco peaches um, don't have a whole lot in them. They just basically have peaches, water, sugar, and a little bit of citric acid, which I even use citric acid sometimes depending on what I'm canning. Um, so it was just a nice way to have some peaches on the shelf. Well, now we have these. And of course, my girls tend to gravitate towards something that I make versus what the store makes. So they've been eating these and not eating these. So I may need to come up with some like peach jam or something like that <laughs> to use up the rest of my Costco peaches. Next to that, we have pears and we are definitely going on pears for, um, probably this next year and potentially the next year we I did so many pairs and we are definitely not eating through them at a pace where I think I will need to do them definitely not this next summer and potentially the next okay so <laughs> I'm trying to get down where you guys can see me and I can talk at the same time so this was probably my most intense project of this past year and that is grape juice and I know I talked about this before but this is homemade grape juice you put the grapes in in fact I think I explained it in a video so I will link that below super simple so delicious so delicious I'm not someone that buys juice in the store almost never ever ever like my children think it's probably Christmas if I buy juice in the store however after doing this I like having homemade juice is just a whole nother level. So I had made enough juice for three years and the only other thing I might do this next year is if I can find white grapes is make some white grape juice. Um, because there was a shortage this past year, we could not order white grapes from where I get them. So we only did the purple grapes. Next to that down here on the shelf, I've got a product that I kind of came up with on my own and that is some diluted apple juice. It's not actual like potent apple juice. It's just all the water that comes off my apples when I cook them. Um, I save it all and I can it and my girls love it. And actually my husband also loves using it in marinades for meat. So it's a really good way to kind of give your marinade a little bit of a sweet flavor. And then next to that down here, I've got a box with some spaghetti squash from this past year. And that was actually from our garden 
Um, I'm not doing a garden this coming year. I buy a lot of local produce and find really great sales on things like I mentioned. Um, but I think I'm going to do a couple garden boxes right behind our house. We live in town and so our garden this past year had to be at my parents house and it just was a lot. And so this next year um, we're not going to do a garden but hopefully the following year we'll be in a different house and be able to do a full size garden. Okay we're in the next section and I like to call this section my veggie section kind of um there's, <laughs> there's a lot of things in here um and i try to kind of just group things together by what they are so up here we have baby carrots and they are a really great beginner project because you don't have to really cut anything or do anything um you just pretty much dump the bags in the jars and go through the canning process um, and then next to that I've got green beans and I some of these are from our garden Some of them are from a market that I was able to get green beans for a dollar a box Which was great. So those kinds of deals I take advantage of and definitely preserve it so that we have it on the shelf and then next to that is my onions and peppers and I did show that in a video not that long ago so I will be sure to link that below. I know I've said this before but this is one of my favorite things to have on the shelf is onions and peppers not only because they are amazing for just getting out for a omelet or for cheese steaks or whatever and your onions and peppers are already made up for you but the broth they produce is so delicious to make rice and use in many other things. So I always save the broth and a lot of this stuff I like to save like the berry juices, save all of those, make them into a drink or use them in baking or some other way. It's just, you have to use it all, it's so good. And then next to that I have some asparagus up here and this is something I don't know if I will do again. If I do, it's kind of in small batches. It's something that we only need like one can or load a year and I'm gonna talk about that and how much you figure out for each year here in a second. But um, it just, they just kind of taste like green beans. That's what we all decided. And for the cost of asparagus, it's just not worth doing a ton every year. So now we're going to talk about this whole area right here because as you can see, it's all the same thing. I think I have about 100 quart here. This is something I just did. I just stocked us up. And I was going to mention this at the beginning, but this is probably the most empty that my canning shelves will be. I know that sounds probably crazy at the amount of stuff you're seeing, but keep in mind that a lot of these things are two years worth of something. And so there's a lot of things missing here, like some tomato products and things like that that need to be put into the pantry um, this coming year. So this is something I like to do in the winter time and that's potatoes. And I have explained how to do them before. I will leave that linked below. So I just stocked us up. So you're probably wondering how long these this will last us. So we eat fried potatoes roughly twice a week. Um, and that's usually what I make with this. You can make a lot of things with these potatoes. You can make potato salad, you can make, um, use them in soups, you can make them into mashed potatoes if you want to. The texture is a little, not the, quite the same, but we've done it, we've ate it, and it's been good. Um, so if we eat about two jars of these a week, then that means I need about 100 quart for a year. So this is actually only one year's worth of potatoes for us. And I like to do it in the winter time because um, I, it's kind of a uh, process. It's something you have to soak the potatoes and all of that. And it's just an off season project that I like to tackle. So this here I would say is about 150 pounds of potatoes. And I can get a 50 pound bag for a really good price from one of my local markets. I've checked around to make sure that I find the cheapest price. And you always use red potatoes when you can potatoes. I'm not gonna go on and on about the potatoes, <laughs> because I could because we do use them they're probably the bulk biggest thing in our long storage pantry um, we don't eat a lot of pasta so this is kind of in place of our pasta so just to touch on how you figure out for a year think about in a week or in a month how often you would want to use that product that you're making and that will give you your answer on how many quarts pints 
whatnot you need for the whole year or for potentially two years. So next to that is actually my current project and you guys might see this in the next video along with canning the pumpkin. I am currently working on canning some sweet potatoes. They are fantastic. You can get them out, warm them up, mash them up, put butter on them, or you can gently, cause they are a little soft, put them into a pan with butter and fry them up. That's what I did yesterday morning with some scrambled eggs um, for the girls for their breakfast, but they can be used, I feel like, at any meal. I love sweet potatoes personally. They're one of my favorite vegetables. And then next to that, I have my corn. And this is something that I did not do even like half Probably I maybe did half of what I should have done for the whole year. And I kind of caught it at the tail end of the season. I thought that I would just quickly do up some corn. I think I did 150 ear, something like that. And I definitely need to do like at least 300 this next year, if not some more, and also need to do it in quarts as well as pints, just because sometimes at dinner time, depending on what we're having with it, a quart would be a lot more convenient. Sometimes at lunchtime, we only want a pint. And this is actually where I get to share the fun little trick with you guys. And that is my husband's grandmother told me that the best way to can corn so that it doesn't taste stale or canned is to put a slice of tomato <laughs> on top of your corn. Something about the acidity helps out the corn's flavor and it's definitely held true for us. I know that a lot of store-bought canned corn is a little cringy. It's not the best thing unless you're making like a cowboy dip or something like that. However, this canned corn is so yummy. You put some butter with it you put salt and pepper and you, my girls will literally beg to just eat a bowl of corn for lunch. <laughs> so much they like this. I also cream my corn, which is just a special way of removing the kernels off the cob. And it's really easy to do. And I can't wait to show you all how to do that this summer because we are definitely gonna have a whole week at some point in the summer of doing corn. All right, I feel like I keep having to like get lower and lower. So here I've got some canned pumpkin and like I said, I am actually in the process of canning a little bit more up, but this pumpkin I canned last month and so my pumpkins held out really, really nice and it's unusual to find recipes on how to can pumpkin because it is a, what they consider a rebel canning recipe. So I will show you all that and I know that a lot of people do not can it this way, so we'll talk about that in the next video or so. Next to that, I actually have some canned soups, and I did this in a video, I will leave that linked below, but it's so convenient to have some healthy home canned soup um, that has my home canned broth in it, and it's just easy to warm up for lunches. We've got the Zeppa Toscana, a chicken tortilla and a gumbo, which I love. Next to that, I've got some tomato soup. This is something I actually recently just canned all of this because I had a bunch of tomatoes left over from last year in my freezer and I needed to get them out of the freezer. And so this all got canned up a couple weeks ago. And this is something also that I learned this past year that I've got to can a lot of is tomato soup because my family loves it. The next to that, I have some canned chili, which I did almost a year ago now. And um, I'm probably going to can some more of that soon. I think I'm gonna go through a little bit of soup canning before like summer hits and we have a lot of other canning. And then right here on the end, I also have some canned cabbage. This was something new for me that I tried not that long ago. It's really nice to get out. You can stir fry it up with some butter, just as something different. And I personally love the flavor of canned cabbage. Okay, now we're down at the bottom of this section. And this was kind of my most bare area right now. I do have another set of shelves over there that currently houses a lot of empty jars. So I'm sure we're gonna have to overflow into that once summer hits. Um, but down here is where I like to keep my broths and I'm almost out. I did tell you all that in a video soon, I'm going to show you how I'm making broth. I also need to make some beef broth. I don't have any home canned beef broth right now, but this is chicken broth. It's really simple to make. I used a bunch of it to can a bunch of these soups. One of my favorite things about home canned broth is that I can make it in pint size because a lot of recipes sometimes will call for two cups of broth and you're opening up a big container of broth 
and then it sits in your refrigerator and just simply doesn't get used. So um, I love being able to have pints of broth. And then this here is all salsa. And this is probably um, two more years worth of salsa. And it's a very, very, very mild salsa, like very, very not spicy. And that's because we have kids that can't handle hot salsa. This summer, I'm going to be doing hot salsa. My husband and I love it, and I've been buying a few store-bought jars here and there just because we really like it. I mean, we could add hot sauce to this, but it just doesn't taste quite the same. So this shelf will end up with a lot of tomato products. You're gonna see in one of my other shelves, I have store-bought tomato products because this past year, I did not do much tomato. Um, so I wanna do diced tomato, tomato sauce, that kind of thing this summer, hot salsa. And then this will also get restocked with my broths as well. Okay, so this is the next section and this holds my meats. Um, so up here I've got meats. I love home canned meats. It just is so convenient for so many different things. So up here on the end, I have ground sausage that is canned up. It's great for soup, great for egg casseroles, breakfast, um, you name it. It's just really convenient to have on the shelf. This is something that once I hit a really good sale on pork butts again, I'm going to make more of, and that's pulled pork. This is so good, you can eat it right out of the jar without warming it up. It's got the barbecue sauce already in it. It's just so delicious. Next to that, I have my one lonely can of ground beef. And this is another project I'm hoping to hit before tomato season comes around, is to do more canned beef. It's so great, you can warm up taco meat really fast, just add your spices in. You can make barbecue sandwiches really fast, it's great in casseroles, soups. It's an awesome thing to have on the shelf, that's why I'm almost out of it. Next to that, I've got canned chicken. This is all canned chicken. It's just some different pieces and parts of chicken. Then on this shelf, I have my pickle shelf. And we are a family that loves pickled things. So I may do some more, <laughs> some more pickled type stuff. So I have one lonely jar of some pickled jalapenos. I need to do some more of those. Whenever Aldi goes on sale with those, I'm probably gonna snag them up and can up some more. I've got some Costco or Sam's Club pickles behind there that I had just grabbed at one point just because we really like pickles. Next to that, I have my sweet pepper relish. We use this stuff constantly. We usually have a jar of sweet pepper relish and a jar of mustard relish in the refrigerator at all times because we eat burgers at least once a week, sometimes twice a week and also make sandwiches for lunch, and those things go on sandwiches. I have some dill relish here that's from the store. Um, I'd like to make my own dill relish this summer. I just didn't have time to do it last summer, and so I grabbed some jars just for us to have on hand at the store, and then also banana peppers. We really, really love those on salads and all kinds of things, and if I get time this summer, I'd like to do some of my own home canned of those as well. I did mention the mustard relish, and this is actually a recipe that comes from Corey's side of the family. We really, really love that. It's delicious. Next to that, I've actually got some beet juice for making pickled beet eggs, and I've got my dill spears. I did actually a really small batch of these this past year, thinking I would be the only one to eat them, and lo and behold, my girls love them. So I'm gonna have to do more of them. I have two years worth of bread and butter pickles. That's kind of a staple in our house. And then next to that, I have my, um, so they've been here a year, and then I will have them probably for two more years. And that is my pickled beets. I did a lot of them this past year, enough for three years worth. So they will be great. I won't have to do them again for a while. And the main reason I do can these is because we love pickled beet eggs. And so we do eat the beets, but the eggs is the real treat <laughs> and why I make these. All right, so we are coming to the tail end of this shelf, but this down here is kind of a random area. It may, I may end up with some more pickles down here, I don't know. And that's the thing, whenever it comes to food 
preserving and storing and all of that stuff. It's all in such a cycle because you have things cycling out, you have things cycling in. That is why I like to work on things that I can in the winter time, just because there's so much of it in the summer. So if you can do broths in the winter time, meats are a great thing to do in the winter time, especially if you can land on some really good sales. Um, that works out well, or if you're gonna order a whole beef, we are gonna get a few pieces and parts from um, my in-laws. They're in the process of ordering a beef. And so um, I'm going to be doing some stuff up with that probably, or putting things in the freezer. So down here is some very interesting things. I have got honey. I like to buy my honey in a five gallon bucket, and then I put it into jars like this that have obviously a good seal. They, aren't, they are not canned. It is raw honey. Um, but honey, as long as it's kept cool in an area like down here, um, it's perfectly fine for years and years and years. They found honey in the pyramids that was still intact. So <laughs> it's got its own um, preservative system that it's perfectly fine. I just like to have it in jars like this so it's easier to manage, easier to take up to the kitchen. And then next to this, I have got canned butter. And I know I'm probably going to have so many comments about this, but canned butter, if done right, if it's treated like a meat, basically is great and fine. It does change its texture a bit, but you can keep it on the shelf for five years, which is great. So if I'm out of butter, or if we just want butter for something specific, like certain baking and whatnot, um, that we need a soft butter right away, I can come down here and grab it. And a pound about fits in a pint. So let me know in the comments if you guys would be interested in how I can butter. Maybe I can show that the next time I hit a good sale on butter. Um, and then next to that, I've got maple syrup on that side. So over here is my dry good tubs. And what I like to do is I use Mylar bags just for the longevity. Um, it usually adds a couple of years onto dry goods. And so I just keep random stuff in here depending on what we are needing. Um, here I've got powdered milk in both of these. And I use that to make yogurt. Um, sometimes at certain discount markets that we have um, in our area, I can find powdered milk for very, very inexpensive. Below that, I have a bin that has white flour and rolled oats. And to be honest, I probably won't store them this way again. I put them into some Mylar bags before I started storing them in five gallon buckets. And I'll show you guys those. Um, but I just have extra in there. And then next to that, I have all of the ingredients I need for my gluten-free flour mix. The next section over, I've got almonds and pecans. And I'll probably just put nuts in there when I go to Costco. And I also, on the end, have chocolate chips, powdered sugar, um, cocoa powder, just kind of odds and ends. It's easy to access on that end piece there. Then under that, I have brown rice and white rice in one bin. And the other bin has got some black beans, chickpeas, and popcorn. And then over here is my shelf of things that are not home packaged. <laughs> so this shelf is my shelf that has stuff that... I either can't can, haven't canned, um, or is just really difficult to, and it just makes more sense to just buy it. So one thing that I have up here is my pink Himalayan salt, and that is what I use in all of my canning. That's the only salt that we eat, and I have a bucket of real, the Redmond Real Salt, and then I also have a bunch of containers of just Walmart's brand of um, Himalayan salt. I had gotten that first, and then I ordered this. Um, we have boxes of Ritz crackers. That is something that is really hard to make homemade. So it's something that I keep on hand and we've done a few other crackers, but the girls always love Ritz crackers the best. If Corey wants crackers in his soup, it's usually Ritz crackers. So I actually have the box that they can get to down here. These are just extras and I get them at Costco. Then on this shelf, I've got some nut butters. I have some peanut butter flour, I got macadamia nuts. Um, that's something that I don't generally buy in massive bulk just because it does go bad and we eat it, but not like crazy. Not like some people eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and things like that. So I don't buy it in huge quantities. Next to that is just some special syrups. I really love a brand called Chalk Zero. If you guys don't know what it is, look it up. Um, it's made with great sweeteners and their chocolates are really good, but this is just some syrups from them. Another syrup back here. Here is my store-bought 
beef broth because I don't have any on the shelf so it's just sitting there and I always keep a nice stash if you guys missed it a few videos ago I know um, some of you were commenting and saying that the pudding chocolate chip cookie recipe that I rave about talk about make every once in a while on camera it needs instant pudding and so it's something that I like to keep on hand especially if I find it at a good price at some of the markets that I go to um, to make chocolate chip cookies. So that's something that we have. Here is baking soda, and of course we all know that baking soda can be used for everything, and I get that at Costco, I think. I think I got these bags at Costco, if not Walmart. I know Walmart has these bags. Down here is some canned artichokes um, from Costco. I've got roasted red bell pepper. That's something I wanna try canning at some point, probably this summer. Um, we use it a lot to make like paninis or melted sandwiches is to put the roasted um, red bell pepper in there. I've got some canned black beans because I want to home can black beans. I just haven't gotten to it. It's one of those things that's on the back burner. I want a few on hand. This is chopped green chilies. Now, you guys always like to talk about all the things I make and I don't always show you my flops. But this past year, I tried to can green chilies myself. Biggest mess ever. It is a huge process. You have to roast them and they're very difficult to scrape the flesh out of. It, it was just, so if you have any tips and you can green chilies yourself, let me know in the comments. But, um, so I decided, you know what? They're not that expensive. Something I can buy at the store and we're gonna just do it that way. <laughs> and I've got some canned sauerkraut here. I do wanna start making my own uh, fermented sauerkraut. Also some olives and olives, depending on where, what brand they are, check them out. They can have some very odd preservatives in them. So um, to keep their color, this brand doesn't, but that's something to check for. We've got some lemon juice and lime juice. And that's something else that I would like to try to, to get done. I've done it in the past. I just don't have any um, now is canned lemon juice. It's really good to make lemonade with. And got some cornstarch, baking powder, molasses. I actually am just using up the last little bit of brown sugar that I store bought because I realized how easy it is to just store white sugar and make my own brown sugar and you need molasses to do that. All right, dropping down to the next section. I've got marinara sauce on the end there because like I said, tomatoes, I didn't do a lot this past year. And then a few tomato products. We've got some graham crackers and our Ritz crackers. These are just the two crackers I ma mainly buy and keep on hand. I've got sweetened condensed milk on the end over there, and I know I'm usually one to be really healthy about things, but when strawberry season hits in our area, my husband loves eating fresh strawberries with sweetened condensed milk and maybe a little bit of some shortbread in there, and so that's why I keep the sweetened condensed milk on hand. And then I've got some sta shelf stable almond milk. We don't drink regular milk unless it's like kefir or yogurt. Um, but we do, however, go through a ton of almond milk. We, our whole family drinks so much almond milk. And so I saw that Costco had this shelf stable kind for when I'm in a pinch and I can't go to the store, but we need some almond milk. So I decided to grab a case of that the last time I was there. Next to that, I have my canned coconut milk and I use that in a lot of recipes. Um, I really, really like that, especially when I'm making something dairy free. Um, it's a good alternative to heavy cream. Down on the bottom, we've got our oils. So I've got coconut oil, avocado oil, and then a few different um, olive oils. And those, the dates on those, I think are like, I wanna say three years from now or something like that. So it's great to just be able to buy it all at once and not have to run to the store for something random. That's my mentality whenever it comes to a lot of this. As you're gonna see on my condiment shelf, I don't wanna have to run to the store just for mayo. If I only have to get mayo every six months or every once a year, that sounds better to me than having to remember it on my list all the time. So there are certain staples in our house that I just do that with. I've got some lard over there and I actually want to try rendering some of my own lard at some point. 
And then next to that, I've got some canned tuna. This area over here is pretty self-explanatory. Um, it's just some different condiments that we like to keep on hand. Some, you know, salad dressings for pasta salad, some hot sauce, something else I want to make myself, and steak sauce and, you know, just different things like that. So ketchup, mustard, mayo, and then I have all my vinegars here for canning my pickles and things like that. This shelf currently holds all of our empty jars. Um, and it probably this summer will be transferred into some canned goods because uh, once they're full, I'm gonna need somewhere to go with them once my other shelves are completely filled. And then right here, I've just got some odds and ends. These containers are great for just freezer items. If I'm gonna freeze some soup or something like that, these are also for freezer meals. I know I've showed you all them before. If I can remember, I'll link those below. I know I've gotten requests for that recently to link those pans. You can get them in packs of four, I think, four or eight on Amazon. And then these are some bread bags just for bread loaves. Down here, I've got my Mylar bags and my oxygen absorbers for dry goods. And besides all of that, it's just kind of organized by size of my jar. Next to that over here is all of my dry good buckets. And these actually are empty. They're just great for when I'm canning and stuff like that. And then I've got a random bag of flour over here. But the main things I keep in these big buckets, I like these lids too, they're great to get into, is my white flour, white sugar, and rolled oats. Okay, so turning around here, this little area I'm not gonna get into today. Maybe I will if I do a freezer tour video, which let me know in the comments if you guys wanna see that. But on the other side over here is my, I would like to call my dry goods shelf. This shelf mainly houses my herbs and basically my home apothecary, and then also spices, and just a few other odds and ends. So this side here, I'm not gonna go into great detail. I may um, go into this a bit more if I do a freezer tour video, but this here is my herb side of my shelf. I love getting crates like this if I see them at a flea market or anything like that. These were some kind of vegetable crates, but they work great for storage. Up there is droppers and things for the tinctures that I make. And then these guys here that look kind of like socks <laughs> um, have a few extra like onions and potatoes that I can come down and grab. They have little openings on the end. They are from Amazon. I will link them for you guys if you want to get some yourself and just keep them hung in a dry place. One of the reasons I like them is because I can go through and squeeze the potatoes or the onions and just make sure that we don't have anything getting soft. And it also is kind of easy if you've got one that's going bad to be able to see it. That way you can take everything out and save the rest of them. So we've got the herbs, tincture kind of stuff here. This is some tinctures that have been made um, that need to go into dropper bottles. Next to it, I have some wine. We don't drink wine, but once in a while, I like to make a good wine sauce. So have those around. You all might recognize these if you watch my channel often. These are my extracts that I have extracting. So I actually wanna open these up and taste some of them soon. I'll link the video to when I did these below as well. This is my whole entire spice shelf. I buy my spices in bulk. So we got chili powder, onion powder, and then I also have been dehydrating some of my own. So this year I wanna do um, a lot of herbs in our backyard and I wanna dehydrate them and put them into here. And then below that, I've got some other dehydrated items. Um, I've got spaghetti squash, broccoli, oranges for in tea. That's really, really good. We've got some pucker fruit, which is just dehydrated kiwi. It's really good, it's like a sour candy. And then next to that, I have shredded carrots that were at a market. I think they were like, I want to say like 25 cents a bag or something. And I grabbed them and dehydrated them just to be able to throw in soup. And then the last of our dehydrated apples from this past year, um, I feel like I can never do enough of those. The girls just love those. Thank you all so much for watching today. Like I said, I will do a freezer tour and kind of fill you in on a few things that I didn't show you today. If you guys want to, if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. Let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know what you would like to see from me as far as content. I always love hearing from you all. And I respond to all the comments that I possibly can. 
and give this video a like and I will see you all in my next video.